Hey y'all, I have a question for you today, and that is, do you plan to tip your house? And if you do plan to do it, do you have enough set aside to do it? If you go to a restaurant, you are expecting to pay for a meal. You're also expecting to pay for a tip. And here's what your experience would look like if you weren't willing to tip somebody. You'd have no server, okay? So you'd pull in, say your meal's 35, 50 bucks a plate. You go to the back, you scoop the food, plate the food yourself in the kitchen, you walk it out to the table, you sit down. When you're ready for your next course, you stand up, you do it all again, okay? put the server into the situation and all of a sudden you're spending time talking with the person or people you came with, you're not cooking, you're not plating, you're not doing dishes, you're not having to get up unless you wanna get up. So the tip actually brings the special experience into the picture. For your house, it's actually not that different. You buy the meal or the house and then we think that magically our space will be special and it'll feel unique and amazing to us but then we realize there's a lot of furniture that it takes to really fill a house and make it feel make it work for us and make it feel special to us that's where the tipping comes in if you're looking to buy a house maybe even your first house and you've never thought about what it costs to furnish it start adding up the furnishings that you think you're gonna need. You know, how much is that sofa that you're gonna want for your living room? How much is that sectional that you're gonna have in the family room? How much is the desk that you're gonna need in your home office? All of these things really start to add up. And while you don't have to do every single room at once, the idea of living in a home for 10 years and still not having really been able to furnish it the way that you want leads me to think that you're gonna spend 10 years missing out on some of the experiences that you could have had in your house, not having it furnished somewhat quickly. So if you plan to tip before you buy your next house, you're in a great situation to really be able to afford to just jump in and start customizing that interior. If you've already bought the house, and you are five or 10 years in, and it's still not the way that you want, that's okay too. Start putting aside a little bit of money every month, every quarter, maybe with an annual bonus, to start really investing in your space so that it gives back to you, that it comforts you, that allows you to entertain as you want, to make your life experience special there. Okay, so here are the percentages. I would say if you need to really touch every you know, area of your house or furnish it in some way, you're looking at a minimum of 20% of the home's value. And of course this can change by region, right? Um, that might be too much in some areas where the real estate is, you know, the footprint's very small for what you're paying, as in California, right? But in Virginia, I think 20% is the minimum that you should be kind of planning to spend if you really need to totally customize that interior and furnish it. And as the price of your home goes up, that percentage will go up to a point. So if you're in a $4 million home in Virginia or even a $10 million home, you might be closer to 30 or 35% because the sofa that you would put in a four hundred or six hundred thousand dollar home is not going to be the same sofa that's in a four or ten million dollar home. It's just not going to look right, um, and it's definitely not going to be an IKEA sofa uh, in that four or ten million dollar home. The home is asking for something uh, more special. It's asking for better craftsmanship because hopefully, at the four and ten million dollar home price in Virginia, you're getting amazing craftsmanship in the architecture. So your sofa should also have some amazing craftsmanship. Maybe it's hand-stitched, like suiting detail, um, sewing along the seams, or maybe it's a hand-carved leg, you know, something that took somebody a long time and therefore justifies that higher price point. So this can be a controversial subject and a lot of people have never even thought about the idea of saving beyond just purchasing the home or they don't have a, an accurate number um, percentage wise of how much extra they should be saving to really furnish that home whether it's immediately or over time so i'd love to know your thoughts you can't offend me tell me if you think that this is a load of you know what or if you agree with it in the comments below thanks so much for watching take care bye